Hello! Um, two videos in one week. This is a crazy week for me. Um, I know my videos have been a little bit slow coming lately, but I'm hoping to maybe get back on things. Who knows? But what I wanted to talk about today was my upcoming trip to the DC Pen Show. Um, I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be posting this video, but my guess is that I will be posting it on Wednesday, August 3rd or Thursday, August 4th. So it'll be kind of right before the pen show. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of, um, you know, the things that I am bringing with me um, in terms of, you know, like kind of my EDC for while I'm in DC, kind of what my like schedule slash game plan is for the show, because it's a little bit different this year than last year. Um, talk a little bit about how I'm using the things that I learned last year to um, influence what I'm going to be doing this year and just that kind of stuff. So I did write a post last year um, after going to the DC Pen Show in 2015 about, you know, the things that I learned and the things that I was going to do differently. So I will be sure to link that down below if you want to check it out. But I will be recapping sort of the main points, at least about the things that I had planned to do differently in this video. So, you know, read it if you're confused about anything, but it's not necessarily required reading before you start this video. So um, let's start with kind of our general like game plan for going up to DC. Um, so we are going to be heading up there on Thursday night. And um, because Wesley has to teach in the afternoon, we will be leaving around dinner time from Richmond and then heading up to DC. So we'll be getting in, you know, later in the day. So Thursday is kind of, um, kind of written off. Um, we're actually meeting my mother and her um, man friend in DC. They're driving out from the Midwest. Um, so Thursday night, we will probably just do like dinner with them and then go to bed early is my guess. Um, and then Friday, we are going to pop into the show a little bit in the morning. You know, I'm planning on getting a, a weekend pass. So we'll do a little bit of browsing, you know, in the morning maybe, and maybe again in the afternoon. But for the bulk of the day, we're going to be out in the city sightseeing with my mother because I don't know that she's ever been to DC before, at least not recently. So, you know, we're going to kind of be going around with them and like taking them to different places and stuff. Um, and then we'll come back Friday night to kind of hang out with people and, you know, do that stuff. And then Saturday, again, I plan to go to the show on Saturday, but not like all day. Um, you know, we'll probably pop in for maybe an hour or so in the morning. I really want my mom to be able to see kind of the whole thing, like, you know, like really experience it. And then we'll probably go back out again during the day to do some more sightseeing or go to a museum or something in, in DC. Um, and then we'll be back again at night to kind of, you know, hang out with people and do that kind of stuff. And then I don't exactly know what the plan is for Sunday, but we're going back, we're coming back to Richmond on Sunday. Um, but we're driving this time instead of taking the train. So we have a little bit more control over the timeline of our trip. So I guess I'm going to now, based on kind of the things that I was just saying, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the things that I had written last year that I would do differently this year and how I'm kind of making sure to do those things differently this year. And you're going to see me looking down. That's because I'm looking at my phone, which actually I have my blog post pulled up on my phone <laughs> so that I can hit each point. So some of the things that I said I was going to do differently in 2016, um, let's see. So um, one of the things I said was go to the hotel first, drop off our bags, then go sightseeing. That's because last year what we did was we took the train, um, the Amtrak from Richmond up to DC. So, you know, we arrived at, I can't remember the name of the station, whatever the central station for the trains is in DC. Um, you know, we got there and then we didn't necessarily want to take the Metro all the way out to our hotel because that's kind of a long trip. Like Tyson's Corner is on one of the Metro lines. I think it's on the Silver Line. Um, so you can get there via the Metro and like the Metro stop from the hotel is not very far. Like it's maybe, maybe a quarter mile. Like definitely for us who walk all over the place all the time, not a big deal. Um, but it just takes time like it takes half hour to 45 minutes maybe depending on you know when you hit the trains to get from the center of DC out to Tyson's Corner. So we just didn't want to spend that kind of time going there and then back and then you know plus it's expensive too to take the metro that far. So what we did last year was we got in and then we went sightseeing with like our backpacks and stuff. Not a good idea. 
So that will be solved this year purely because we are driving, um, just with like when we have to leave and everything, catching the train is just not really an option for us. So we're just gonna drive up, which means we'll go directly to the hotel and it's not a, not a big deal. Plus last year we went on Friday. So we really wanted to like cram as much as possible in versus this year, since we're going up Thursday evening, you know, we can kind of write off the rest of Thursday evening if we want, and we're not losing time compared to what we did last year. So that's always nice. Um, let's see. Last year, we also made the mistake of like going sightseeing after we had checked out of our hotel and before our train left. Again, that's kind of not an issue this year because we have a car there. So, you know, we have that flexibility as well. Um, let's see, I said I wanted to make sure I got a map of the metro on paper because we were getting around using the metro. Um, I think, I don't know if I'm going to get one on paper necessarily this year, but I for sure I'm going to take a screenshot on my phone so that I don't have to worry about like, you know, shoddy data connections when I'm down in the metro station. But I'm also feeling much more confident about my ability to get around on the metro this year because we've been up to DC a couple more times than when we had first gotten out here last year. So, cause when we went to the pen show last year, it was right after we moved. So um, we've had a little bit more time to get accustomed to it this year. Um, let's see, get a smart pass for the Metro, which we did. Those are basically just like the refillable little cards that you just tap versus like the paper cards that you have to like feed in and it spits it out. No, don't do that. If you're gonna be using the Metro a lot in DC, get one of the little smart cards. I think it charges you a couple dollars for the card itself but then you save money when you use it so like if you're planning on going to dc and using the metro with any kind of frequency definitely worth it to get the smart card and i still have ours from last year um, in my wallet so i just have to grab them and then we're good to go um let's see have a bigger budget um let's see have a bigger budget and have it in cash and don't even think about bringing my credit cards to the show and if other people want me to get them stuff, have money in hand ahead of time. So I haven't done that because I don't necessarily know that anyone else wants me to get them anything. I'll have to ask my older brother um, since he's kind of into pens, but I don't think anyone else will want anything. Um, but the way I'm getting around this this year is I just am planning on getting less stuff. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit in kind of my wish list. So we'll leave that hanging for right now. Um, bring shorts and a hat for sightseeing. Yes, I'm definitely going to be wearing shorts when we go out and go do our sightseeing. So yes, that's definitely a thing. Um, get a weekend trader pass. Already planning on doing that. Get the hotel reserved early enough to get the show rate. Did that as well. That only, the only reason we had that issue last year was just because uh, like with the move, we weren't sure when we were going to get out here and if we were going to be able to go to the show and everything. So we kind of left it to the last minute, but I did reserve the room quite a while ago. So that's been taken care of. Um, bring a proper suitcase because after blah, blah, blah. So that's because last year, because we were riding the train and we knew we were going to get off the train and then go sightseeing and then go to the hotel. All we brought was our backpacks with us. And so, which was fine when we got there. But then we bought things and trying to get that stuff to fit in already full backpacks didn't work so well. So, I mean, this is partially alleviated by the whole bringing a car thing. Also, instead of bringing a backpack, because I don't have to lug this thing around, I'm going to bring a duffel bag instead of a backpack. So that will make life a little bit easier. But like I said, I don't necessarily plan on buying much. So, you know, I'm solving that one in a couple of ways. But I guess that was about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just kind of you know, silly first time things that I didn't know last year that now I know better. And a lot of things, you know, because this is also a weekend for me to really get out in DC and sightsee, it was a lot of things with that too, like how to properly be sightseeing in DC. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about my wish list since I hinted on that. So my wish list this year, um, last year what I got is I got a safari, the, the gray safari, which is somewhere around here, but I'm not exactly sure where it is. So I got a gray safari, you know, one of the discontinued ones. I got a bottle of Bung Box ink for myself. I got a bottle of De Atramentis document ink for myself. I got a um, All Star for a friend, and I got a bottle of ink for my older brother. And I bought a pack of field notes, the, uh, the workshop companion. So this year, what I'm looking for is I'd like to get another maybe discontinued um, safari. I don't necessarily have a specific one in mind. And if I don't find something that really like tickles my fancy for a decent price, 
I'm just not gonna get one. Like I don't need one. It's just like, if I'm gonna buy a pen, that's kind of what I want because that's what I've been using. I have no interest in any pens more expensive than that. It's just not gonna happen. So, you know, that's one of those things where if I find one, great. If I don't, great too. I'm not gonna spend more than probably like 50 or $60 on, on a discontinued Safari. Um, I also would like to get a bottle of black ink. Um, I mentioned in my One Book July wrap-up video earlier this week that, um, you know, I really enjoyed using all black pens for my kind of, you know, everyday notebook kind of stuff, but I would like to get some black ink to use with fountain pens, and I'd like something that's, you know, very archival. So, you know, a pigmented ink, so I'm thinking either the Sailor Kiwaguru whatever, the Sailor Black, the Nano Black, or the Platinum Carbon Black, one of those two. Um, again, I can order those through just about any online retailer, so if I don't find it there, no big deal, but, you know, what the heck? It's something I can buy there, it kind of like, um, you know, gets that little urge, like it takes the edge off of that urge to buy things, if I buy one of those there. And then the only other thing I was thinking that I would look for is um, some pilot cartridges because I have a pilot pen that I don't have a converter for and I'd rather just use cartridges in it. And again, I can buy those from any online retailer, but if I can just go ahead and buy them while I'm there, why not? I don't know what color I'm looking for necessarily. I'm thinking either blue, black, or black um, on those, but I guess we'll see. If I can find some brown, I might do the brown because I kind of like the pilot brown, even though it's like a weird orangey brown, orangey reddy brown, but um, We'll see. So those are the only things I'm looking for. For me, mostly this year, it's just kind of to experience it, not necessarily to, um, you know, really buy a lot of stuff or anything. And I don't think Wesley's planning on buying anything this year. You know, he got his big pen purchase last year, and I think this year he's happy just to go and experience and, and do that. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna, like kind of my EDC while I'm at the show. So I showed this in my One Book July wrap-up video, but this is going to be what I will be using um, for, well, the duration of the time that the notebook is being filled. So um, this is just a Story Supply Co notebook, um, pocket notebook. It is a grid notebook, which isn't really showing up because it's so bright, but it's a grid. And I'm currently using a pigment micron, but you know, that might change if I can find some good black ink. But yeah, this is just kind of my everyday notebook. This is where I'm going to be doing my bullet point journaling and then just like any sort of other stuff that needs to be put on paper. So I'll have this. I will, of course, have my phone with me. And that's kind of going to be it in terms of what I'm going to be carrying around. Like I might bring my pens and ink them up with something interesting in case other people want to try them. But given that my pens aren't anything fancy, you know, I'm not really expecting much. And those will, of course, be carried. I guess I can go grab it. I will, of course, carry those in my knock lookout, um, but those will be, you know, like left at the hotel. I'm not going to carry them around with me because I don't need to. Like if I'm out sightseeing in, Dice in DC, I don't need to, to kind of bring that with me. Similarly, like I will bring a couple other things with me that are not going to be part of like my EDC. Like I might bring my Kindle or something, um, you know, for when we're at the hotel, although I don't really expect I'm going to get time to read. But um, basically my EDC is gonna be my phone and my notebook. And then that's all gonna be in this little bag that I use. So this is just a little purse from Target. You can see it's very small. I like it because it has a tassel and I am a sucker for tassels. And I don't typically like these sort of chain um, like handles, but because it's so small and so light, it doesn't bother me that much. But it's really small. It's basically big enough only to hold the essentials. So this is the inside of it. Oh, it's big enough to hold, you know, lady products. And it has a couple of card slots here. So it will be just big enough to kind of put in like an ID um, and my Metro Pass and maybe a credit card. And that's really all that I need, right? Or, and maybe, yeah, ID, credit card, Metro Pass, yes. <laughs> Um, so it has, you know, the slots right at the front. It means I don't have to worry about like, where are my cards or anything? They're just right there. And then it's kind of a, well, I say a big open pocket, and, but it's, you know, it's an open pocket. And then it does have a little zipper pocket here at the back that I typically use, like if I have any cash or anything like that, um, just because it kind of keeps it separated and contained back in here. And I actually think I have a couple dollars in there. 
and some coins maybe. Um, but that kind of keeps that stuff contained. And then you can see that it's just big enough for my phone to fit into because I have a gigantic phone. I have a, a Samsung Galaxy S5 and it, Wesley refers to it as a piece of toast and it really is, like it's very large. And so it just barely fits into here. And then I can put my notebook and pen in here as well. And then I typically will also slip like my keys kind of into here. Um, I probably won't be carrying my keys around because I don't need them, but you know, stuff like that. There's room to slip like a thing of chapstick or something in there too. And that'll basically be it. Um, I'll probably also be carrying a, like a water bottle with me, um, when, like when we're out sightseeing, but yeah, like that's going to be my EDC because I don't really need anything bigger. And even when I'm at the show, I don't necessarily want anything bigger. You know, I want something just barely big enough to hold the essentials because why do I need more space? You know, like I'm not necessarily planning on buying a lot of stuff or if I do, I can just take it right up to my room. Um, so I want to keep the, the stuff that I'm carrying as limited as possible because, you know, with how long the days can get, like when you're both at the show and doing sightseeing, um, you just don't want to be lugging around a bunch of stuff. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I'm trying to think, I guess like any tips, I mean, this video might be coming a little bit late for anyone who's going to their first fountain pen show in DC, but just in case you are and you happen to be watching this before the show, um, just some tips that I have is, um, you know, have a budget and stick to it. Like if, if you are, um, if you are really specific, like I can only spend, let's say a hundred dollars at the show, get a hundred dollars in cash, don't take your card down with you because a lot of people take cards now and it's just an easier way to be like, oh, well, I'll just hand them my credit card and deal with this later. Don't do it. Get your budget in cash and then only spend that amount. And just, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, you know, realize that like a lot of things at the show you can get online somewhere else like later on. There are of course going to be special things. Like for me wanting to buy the discontinued safaris, like yes, I can get those somewhere else, like maybe on eBay or something, but if I see one there that I really want, I kind of have to buy it there. Versus like the inks that I want, I can buy those anywhere. So like just kind of be realistic about like how available is this thing that you want and is it absolutely essential that you buy it at the show? Um, let's see, dress in layers, like because it will start out cool and it will get really hot and crowded. So dress in layers, um, take a lot of breaks, like just like if you're going to be at the show on Saturday, it's going to be crazy. So make sure you eat a good breakfast, you know, go down to the show, make sure that you don't stay in that ballroom forever. Um, you know, get out, drink some water, eat a snack, go back up to your room, take a nap, you know, eat a proper lunch. Um, like don't stay there through lunch, like eat a real lunch. There's plenty of places around the hotel that do lunch. Um, and, and then go back, but like, just make sure that you are taking care of yourself because it can get overwhelming really fast. Um, and basically just really enjoy the people there. You know, I mean, obviously like the pens and stuff are fun, but my guess is that if you're watching one of these videos, like you kind of really enjoy the whole hobby of the pens. And part of that hobby is the people, you know, is, is the community. So like, you know, both the retailers, like don't be afraid to talk to the retailers. Um, some of them, like some of the, people who kind of go with like their private collections, they can be a little bit less friendly sometimes, but um, definitely like people who are there, like the Andersons or um, like the people for Vanessa Pens, like that kind of stuff, like they're very friendly. Feel free to talk to them, ask them things, stuff like that. And they're veterans of these shows, so they know a lot. So don't be afraid to talk to them. Talk to other pen people. If you see pen bloggers that you recognize or people that you know from Twitter, don't be afraid to say hello, especially like Twitter or Instagram where like you probably have a good idea of what that person looks like. Don't be afraid to say hello because everyone's there for the same reason. So like there's nothing weird about saying hello to, you know, a pen blogger that you like or something like that because, you know, it's, it's, they're kind of expecting it, you know, like it's kind of expected that like, yes, these are my people and we all kind of know each other. Um, and on that note, you know, the real fun I feel like happens after the show. So I know there's like a meetup, like a pen addict meetup on Friday night, I think. Um, but like even beyond that, like just 
go to the bar in the hotel. Like a lot of people congregate there. A lot of people congregate at the nearby restaurants. You know, don't be afraid to like tweet at someone you know and be like, hey, are you guys doing dinner tonight or something? Um, because everyone there kind of has the attitude like during these social things, like the more the merrier. So, you know, don't be afraid to just join people who are sitting at the bar or something like that, if you recognize them, of course, um, because we're all there to have fun with each other, you know, and to see people that we don't get to see otherwise. So don't be afraid to do that because everyone is super welcoming. So yeah, that's what I got. Um, if you are going to be at the DC Pen Show and you're watching this beforehand, feel free to say hi. I'll be there. I'll probably do something like what I did on, um, what I did last year and I'll put a picture on Instagram of like what I'm wearing if you want to say hi. But, um, yeah, I don't mind it. So feel free to come up and, you know, give me a bop on the shoulder and be like, hey you. Um, but yeah, if you are going, have a great time and be super safe and, you know, have fun with everyone. And if you're not going, um, but want to go, there's always next year and yeah, have a good one and I'll see you guys later. Bye.